Hello, everybody. You are now listening to the Overflow Podcast with Jay and Joaquin. So the question is, how many MCs must get to six? Six MCs. Six MCs. All right, we're going to start. Number one, what up? Welcome to this week's episode of the Overflow Podcast. We are super duper excited <laughs> to be here. We're so glad that those of you that have decided to join us have joined us. As always, I'm Joaquin. I'm Jake. And we are here to entertain, confound, disappoint, perplex, perplex, and anger, and anger you. Yeah, yeah, yeah anger. and all those, uh, and all those things. You know what I'm saying? So it's been a pretty productive week. We just finished Monday, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no. So uh, what's up? We had a. How was your weekend? You do anything exciting? Anything fun? No. Oh, uh, that's a lie. Is it? Yeah, we hung out. We did something fun. Did we? It was exciting. Nah, we didn't do anything. Um, we hung out, but man. we hung out. We did a little. We did a little thing, a little project that we're working on. We could say that. Yeah, we could say that's that. that's a teaser. Right, a little project we're working on. A little, a little, t- little test run. A little test run. A little pilot, if you will. Oh yeah, well they just say it all. And uh, <laughs> all right, so we're starting our own animated series. Yep. <laughs> How awesome would that be, though? That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> Freaking awesome would that be? <laughs> that would um, be ridiculously awesome. So, any animators out there, if, let's yeah. talk. Yeah, like, uh, just think. How good that would look on your resume that you made that these two clowns look good. That's all I'm saying. And our voice acting can't be worse than Beyonce's. Oh, in, shots fired! In, shots uh, fired! What was that movie she was in? The Lion King. She was lying about being a good voice actress. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just that upsets me. Um, I didn't see it because. But uh, yeah, I I, yeah, it. it was a, it was a, you know it was a fun weekend. Did a lot. You know what I did this weekend that was kind of hilarious. Um. And it might call into question my masculinity a little bit. My masculinity a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, you know those uh, places where you can go and paint and like paint like cups and plates? Yes. Um, yeah. So, uh, there's, there's, one, there's one in Duluth. So, uh, at the, at the, me and you hung out and we did our thing. And then I went and got my low carb cheesecake, which was bomb, by the way. Um, so, Z- Zomba Wangos? Zomba Wangos. Something like that. Yeah, it was bomb, by the way. Um, <clears throat> yeah, man, there was one in Duluth that I had that I had seen. So, I went in and, went and I, I painted a frog. <laughs> you, you just went on your own. <laughs> I went on my own. No date. No, no date. Group, no, no church group. group no nothing. No you church just, group. Just me. Hey. You know why? I want to go paint some ceramics. I want to go paint some ceramics. And guess what? I walked in there. I looked the lady in the eye. I looked everybody in the eye, and there was a gnome, and I pushed the gnome off the thing <laughs> to let them know that I meant business. Fortunately, it was a $5 one, so it didn't hurt the pockets too much when the lady was like, you had to pay for that. Yeah, <laughs> and, I was like, um, and I was like, message sent. No one that was in there <laughs> had any doubt that you meant business. <laughs> the business of painting. Of painting. <laughs> so I painted a frog, man. Um, Yay. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. I'm gonna tell you what though, I had a good time. I enjoyed it. It yeah. was fun. Did you give it to your mom and say, "Look, no. mommy, look at what I did in summer camp"? Uh, first of all, <laughs> no, because you gotta wait seven to ten days. <laughs> what? Because they gotta they gotta uh, put it in the in the kiln. Put it in the kiln. Yeah, to to glaze it up. Nice. Yeah, man. What was what was really bad though is I got mad at this little at this. <laughs> there was this little girl and her friend at the table I was sitting at. First of all, I thought I was gonna have to say something to. To, to the girl's mom, right? Because she walked in with some coffee and then she, she kind of gave me a side eye. And I was going to be like, yo, like I'll fight you. <laughs> and I, I'll take your coffee. I, I'll take your coffee and I don't care that you're Korean and might know Taekwondo. I will fight you. Um, racist alert. And then, uh, why? how's that racist? Koreans, Taekwondo is a Korean martial art. Yeah, that doesn't mean that all Koreans know martial arts. But, but that's why it's funny. <laughs> that's why it's racist. <laughs> that's why it's funny. Just like not all Puerto Ricans carry a knife. Um, 
But the two Puerto Ricans in the back cave right now but, do. But I do. Um, I don't know about this clown, but I do. I do. I carry the knife you gave me. <laughs> yeah. See, how bad is that? That's worse. <laughs> That's worse. I, I had to give you a knife. And I grew, I grew up in the country. Oh, but I didn't man. really need one. Um, hey, I unless had I had to stab had, a deer. I had guns in New York. But, uh, um, oh, no, I'll say this. So there's, there's two friends that were paid. Yo, this was a little girl, man. She painted this, like, mushroom house. Yo, it was really dope. I was looking at it like, I should, like, sneak put my initials on there. <laughs> it's, it's still this mushroom from a little girl. But I would never do that. Yeah, I did that, man. So... Uh, for anybody out there that's ever wanted to go paint ceramics, don't listen to the haters like Jay. Go by yourself if you have to. I'm not hating. Don't wait for no friends. Bunch of losers never want to hang out anyway because they got quote unquote families. Um, but yeah, so that was it. Um, let's see. Well, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. So let's go ahead and kind of jump, jump in on it. I will let you. So we're, let's do this. Um. I will save the movie trailer for last, for near the end. Uh, so let's start save the what the movie trailer for near the near the middle before we get started on today's topic. Oh, because it, it matches. So, uh, oh, the specific, right? The very specific trailer. Trailer, right? So a couple of things. Uh, Song of the week. We're gonna go ahead and put that out there. Um, uh, a group that is, I think, quickly become one of our favorites. Um, Ecclesia. Uh, just Ecclesia? just drop just dropped a um an album and this is one of the singles off of the album uh and it's called Una Sola Sangre and it's like a Spanglish type song <laughs> so if you don't speak Spanish you'll understand half of it and um, if you do speak Spanish then you'll understand all of it un- oh, or you might, or if you or speak you Spanish you'll understand the Spanish you'll understand half. half of it too <laughs> Um, or if you speak neither language, you might not understand none of it, but that's okay. The Holy, could, the Holy could, Spirit will translate with the rhythm. The Holy Spirit will translate for you. Um, what you think of the song, man? I sent it to you. I thought it was dope. I thought it was very, um, hmm. almost world music like because it had a little bit of everything. No, nah, I thought it was real, you know, had the Latin like, rhythm, like classic it had the pop, it had classic the, Latinos, Latino sound. But that's the thing, it was, uh, it was unapologetically. Christian. Like, no, no, no. I'm talking about musically. Oh. Because you know how sometimes I have issue with with these bands that want to try to do a sound, but they they water it down for fear that it'll sound like too right. secular or too worldly or whatever. Right. But I am super happy that these guys did not do that. Right. Well, and the thing is that all, all of their songs that we've played, all of them have had a bit of that Latin vibe to it anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was dope. It had, um, I, like I said, I think it had a little bit of, it felt like it had a little bit of everything, right? I mean, it had the Latin right. vibe. It had the pop. Um, it had some of the electronic stuff. So check it out. It's on the playlist. Um, it'll be on the website, theoverfullpodcast.com, Una Sola Sangre. Uh there isn't a music video, but there is an a, a audio video, which we'll uh, have linked there. Um, yeah, and um, I really listen to it, right? Listen to the words, because yeah. they are... It's very unapologetic. Very, yeah. And, like, I listen to that album. Right. Right? And, like, it's a very theologically driven album. Like, I, like, right. I love it. Right. Right. Though, like, they, with, they, they, with, they don't hold back. Right, which is funny, right, because... Because uh, me and Jay had a conversation of some of the artwork, and, we're, and it was just kind of like, huh, you know. Then it, but when you, but it's like uh, when you listen to the the music, it's like, all right, whatever you might have thought the artwork was saying or wasn't saying, that music kind of like crushes it. I mean, it. a lot of people want to deny, you know, a lot of Christians, not people, sorry, a lot of Christians, so called Christians, right? They want to deny the fact that you know symbols mean something. Right, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but the time to fight for the rainbow came and passed. Right now, the rainbow means something else entirely. Right, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what you think. It means something. Not it, it means something else now. It generally, it means something. To some, speaking, right to some some people. Now. Right, right, right. And you want to take it back? 
it's it's a it's a fool's fight to try to say, oh, we're gonna take the rainbow back now. When it first started happening, that's when people should have stood up and done something right. or tried but, to do something about but it. But it do, I don't think. But I think that's the thing too. That's the problem is that, just like, uh, I, I to me, I mean, I honestly, I don't even notice it. Like I just noticed it that it was just part of this bigger picture. Right. Well, I I noticed it because you're you're, because you're doing they're, because they're young. This is not Forky, right? <laughs> I don't know what that is. I noticed it because Forky they're from Toy Story. I, oh, I noticed it because they're young, and a lot of these young kids, right, right, have no theological foundation, right, right, and a lot of these young kids want to go and be quote unquote edgy, right, and do do things rebelliously, but rebelliously dumb, right, for the sake of just like right. doing things, right? right, but but to counter that with this specific group. I mean, we've been listening to them, and not, we've never, I don't think we've ever heard one of their songs. Actually, you know what got me? Where we said, oh, wait a minute, that doesn't. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. But you know what got me? So that's why, to me, there's Is no that doubt. One of, the, one of the members of the band also puts out, like, like, Bible studies, like Bible study videos. Right. And he is, like, like, I, like I'm proud of him. Right, because like, because because again, they're young, and for a kid, he's a his age, he is very knowledgeable of scripture. He's got a great foundation. Whoever his, whoever his leader is or his right. pastor his, is, his church home. I would love to thank them, right, <laughs> and, and give him a nice pat on the back, right, and a couple Starbucks gift cards. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, wait, wait, he's, they're he from they're from they're from Florida, so that the, he'll <laughs> he'll throw those Starbucks back at you. Ah! No, because in Florida you can get a Cubanito. You can get in a, a, in a Starbucks. In a Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, you can get yo, they know what they're doing. Like in Star Wars in Puerto Rico, you can get um wow. see first of a, all a, a coquito flavored frappuccino. Why would you go to Starbucks in Puerto Rico? I know, but I saw the I saw the right the sign on the window. Quote unquote, you no, saw seriously, James. I took a picture. Right, I, I'm James. surprised I didn't send it to you. But anyway, but anyway, right? right. So I saw I saw one of one of one of his Bible studies. Like I saw the whole thing. Right. Dude, and I was like super impressed. Right. And that, and that's the thing, is it's uh like like we talked, you know, I, I think it's you know, I, I you know, I made this I made the statement that if it was if it was done as a way to kind of low key compromise or, or try to low key rebel, then it seems that, that whenever people do that, right, it's reflected in their music. Correct. Right. So if if people all of a sudden um well, you know, c- come out as whatever. Usually, they're in their artists, their music begins to reflect whatever that reality of theirs is. It's like they forgot everything before then. And these kids, I think they're just artistic. They're arty kids, um, artsy fartsy kids. Uh, but their music, there's no doubt. Plus, uh, the picture for the artwork. If you go, if you go on Spotify, um, all the picture of the artwork. I don't know if you noticed this. The picture of the artwork for the album. Was a combination of all the the artwork for each single that they dropped, for a lot of the singles that they dropped. Nah, I didn't. Yeah, so there was a sing a single they uh, forget what the name of the song, but it had the hand, the colored hand, and uh, covenant, covenant. Yeah, are you looking at that now? Yes, I am. Um, yeah, so you notice that that the, like four of those images were straight out of got kind of a combination of uh, of their. Um, so anyway, check it out. Um, Una sola sangre. Very, very dope. We enjoyed it very much. Yeah, I'm going to send it to you so you can listen to it on your way home. Listen to what? The study. Oh. Um, so uh, this oh, yeah. week. I see that now. What? The artwork? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In your face. Sucker. Um, the <laughs> uh, this week, uh, uh, we've got to touch on it because uh, if we didn't, uh, we'd be punks. Uh, uh, San Diego Comic Con has been going on uh, last week, this weekend, and uh, some some pretty dope stuff has dropped. So we'll start with JJ. What's one of the dope things that dropped with San Diego Comic Con? Oh, there's so much. All right, why don't you tell? Let's start with let's start with the television because really that's all we really that's all we really care about all the CW stuff is what we're going to talk about really and I'm sorry but um, I don't know where you wanted to talk about this but but the fact that drop it now Brandon Routh is going to be 
Kingdom Come Superman. You ruined it. Yo, <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> yo, 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 come on. You I, know that no. that's my favorite DC story. No, no. Honestly, honestly, uh, remember I texted you when you were like, oh, let's talk. About, I was like, uh, no, we're going to talk about Brandon, Brandon Roth being Superman. The trailers were fine. The trailers yeah, were fine. Yeah. The trailers were great, but yo. Uh, of the two that I, I didn't see Supergirl's trailer because I quit uh, I, watching I, Supergirl. I didn't, yeah, I didn't either. Or Black Lightning because that's what I don't know. I didn't either. I only saw the two. But I saw the two. Anyway. So and like the little Oh, they thingy, didn't drop one for Legends, did they? The little thingy that they did for Batwoman. Uh yeah. I, whack. Saw, that. I saw that today. That was, was whack. Yeah, it was whack. Yo, so speaking of Batwoman, I'm just gonna drop this. Um, there was an article. I just saw a video that, that was posted the other day. Apparently, um they've seen the, the pilot and there are some questions. Yo, but supposedly wait, questions. Wait, supposedly as, as far as as far as it is not good. Supposedly, there is like a major Batman villain in Batwoman. Yes, Condiment Man. <laughs> I thought it was I thought it was Kite Man. <laughs> <laughs> Condiment Man. That sounds like it would have been a Batman villain from like the sixties. It is. Isn't it? Is the condiment man? Yeah, condiment man is one of those like. Is that one of those weirdo, things I pull? I pulled from the recesses weirdo, of my yeah, mind. <laughs> we're we're all bad guys. He's a real villain. Like so with, condiment, with the, condiment with, man. With the ketchup and mustard and the better, guns. Better than cocaine man. Well, cocaine man yeah. was Marvel. That's right. That was Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> of course it was. Yeah, we know what you were doing, Stan Lee. Cocaine man was Marvel. <laughs> oh man. But all right. So so so. So they dropped the trailers for Arrow uh, in the Flash. Yo. Uh, Arrow's gave me chills. Same. Same. Like, like no lie. Like, chills. I watched it, and I, I got completely enthralled. And, like, when it was done, I looked at Magda, and I was like, yo, I got chills. She was like, you're such a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, shut up, Magda. Nobody likes you. Um, I mean, I married you, but right now I don't like you. <laughs> but nobody else likes you. Nobody else likes you. Um, Yes, like I loved what I love what they did with the trailer, how they did the arc of his story, right? You know, they brought him from the island, they brought him from you know, uh, with Diggle speaking first, and then uh, at the end, where I mean, we know from last season that he's gonna die, and that's why we know this is the last season. The The monitor told him, Yo, you're gonna die, yeah. So the, it ended, right? Arrow ended with the monitor coming and being like, Yo. A crisis is coming. It's time to go. Yeah, that's he, right. Right? He told him, he's like, I, hey, remember I told you? Traded your life. Yo, it's time to go, son. He said it just like that. It's time to go, son. Shaolin. Um, uh, and so, uh, uh, so anyway, so we have, so we have, uh, we have Arrow coming out, uh, in October. I think this season's only like 10 or 13 episodes, too. Yeah. Which, uh, is really, really, really sad. Um, then we have the, the Flash trailer came out. Um, Jay was mad because Cisco was still there after he gave up his powers <laughs> last season. Um, but uh, Cisco was there, and um, there's gonna be a new villain, uh, dude from Heroes, Mohinder from Heroes. Um, and uh, he's gonna be called Bloodwork. It looks, uh, yo, it looks interesting, it look, and it's cool that it's not gonna be another speedster. <laughs> For real, <laughs> right? They didn't bring, even though Godspeed was dope. Yo, Godspeed was dope, but I was, but you know, but it, I was worried that they're gonna bring Godspeed again. But fortunately, they didn't. Um, as the I mean, main they, villain. I mean, but, but they I could bring we, him back. We don't know. They might, right? Because the way Flash, the way Flash, um, does is that they have sometimes they have like a villain for the first half, right, of the season, and then they'll introduce somebody else for the second half. Right. Hopefully, with this one, he's like the main. He's bad. just like the main baddie for like the entire for the whole series, the entire season. Yeah. So, yeah, Flash looked great. You know, it's one of our favorite shows. Uh, Arrow looked great. Um, Yo, and Arrow is done. This is the last season. The last season. Like I said, there are ten or thirteen episodes. I think it's ten. I think so they're only so doing it's ten. Only, it's only the half. <laughs> yeah. So they're going from October through Crisis, I believe. And then bringing in Legends. And then they'll be probably bring in Legends for their last season. Um, so last season of Legends? Yeah. Was that five seasons? Yeah, something like that. I'm not going to lie. That was longer than I thought it would be. Well, but, you know, see, Legends is one of, Legends is like Gotham. It's one of those shows that it's the first season was real shaky. And I was, then it, I was saying a lot. And then it. And then it I think what helped and, Legends was and, the fact that. 
Well, they realized they realized that they can't be as dark. They had as Arrow. They, as Arrow. Cause it kind of started a little dark, yeah. And they finally got his fo- footing, and they were like, you know what? This is. They finally figured this is an ensemble show, and we got different personalities. So let's lean into those, into all those personalities. You know, with like, you know, uh, what's his name? Um, with Adam, you know, his kind of boy scout. I'm a boy scout, you know, and right. him and his bromance with Steel, and you know, so they so they really leaned into kind of the more humorous, goofy aspects yeah, of which, it, which which. And and which is what I was was which is what I was about to say because because they did that right you um you can go in and watch Legends at any time any episode right, right? there wasn't like like all the other ones that there was a storyline like a right. concrete storyline that you had to go and like catch it from the jump or be lost right, right. so with Legends right they just made a fun show that you could yeah. watch I mean they did have an overarching. Uh, so sto- the, story for the for the season, but each episode was still yeah, was, pretty self contained. Yeah, pretty standalone. Um, with with whatever adventure that week, and they brought Constantine last season, which was great, and and um, made him gay though. And uh, no, they made him both. Yeah, it's still gay. <laughs> well, yeah. If you want to send any letters, circle, send it to. <laughs> it's it's still it's still gay. Uh, send it to Jay. In Ackworth. Um, <laughs> Ackworth, Virginia. Send it to management. P.O. Box. 23333. <laughs> Send it to management. 777. The Um. So, yeah. Anyway, so we have uh, Legends coming out. We have, uh, yeah, and then the big the big story was for the, for the crossover for this year, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Um, Every show, like all five shows, all five shows are going to be part of it, and they are bringing everybody in the kitchen sink. Okay, so supposedly, (laughs) apparently, it came out today, right? It came out right before. Yes, right before I left work. So you sent that article. Rumor is that Burt Ward from Batman sixty six is going to reprise his role as Batman sixty six Robin. Uh, Holy it, hijinks, Joaquin! In that in that um, universe, supposedly they're bringing back <laughs> the original Wonder Woman. <sighs> Linda Carter's coming Linda back Carter. as Wonder Woman on a different Earth. All right, so hold on, hold on, hold on. So if you are a fan of comic books, right? Because the Crisis on Infinite Earth storyline, right, and back in the eighties. This was like the biggest thing ever to happen in comic books, period. Right. So right? it wasn't DC Comics and Marvel Comics. This was like in, in the history of comic books. This was like the biggest thing to ever happen. Right. Because right? they like completely the Flash died. Supergirl Girl died. Yeah. Dude, they completely. Like was, they killed heroes. Right? That's how they brought in the multiverse and and the the, the monitor or the anti monitor. Right. And all. Uh, yo. And if you have DC Universe, I believe that storyline is on DC Universe. You can read it. Is it? Because I'll reread that. I believe so. Let it go. Right? So it was just the, the biggest event to happen in comic books. Right? So it, it seems like now, it seems like now the CW, which is owned by Warner Brothers, well, Warner Brothers and DC are trying to bring that feeling or that phenomenon as close as possible to the TV. To TV. I'm just trying to explain what it is that you're talking about, right? So the rumor is that what we've always talked about, right? Right. What we've always talked about is finally going to happen where they're going to connect the Arrowverse to the overarching DC movie universe. Right. That they're trying, they're going to try to do that. The question is, uh, the question is, are they just going to, you know, because. That's where they're like, how much is that going to cost, right? Because they would have to try to, who would they bring in from the movie universe? Uh, who could they bring in to, <laughs> to show for the TV? True. So they're talking about, they might just have Warner, you know, see if Warner Brothers will let them use some footage. Correct. So it could just be a thing where maybe like uh, you have the monitor standing there with Queen and they look into into that earth, right? And they just see see the heroes or whatever. Um, but yeah, it looks like they're gonna try to bring everything. And so. like has scenes of BVS, has scenes of 
like the Donner Superman with Christopher Reeve. Right. Right. If like like you said, um, the article said that Linda Carter will show up as Wonder Woman. As Wonder Woman, right? from but instead the of TV her showing show. up now, have like clips of the TV show. No, no, no. The rumor was that she's actually showing up. No, no, I know, but I'm saying like, oh, oh. like a general idea of of how they're thinking of doing it. Right, Tom Welling. We don't know if he's gonna show up as the Blur or if he's gonna show up as Superman or show up as Superman or the same thing, like footage. Right. I, right? I we don't know. They'll bring in right. the footage of from, the rejected pilot of Aquaman. <laughs> yeah, from from my from what I've read, from what I my understanding, what I've from what I've read is that the Burt Ward from Batman sixty six, right? Uh, the corny, the campy Batman from the sixties is gonna show up. That Tom Welling will be showing up in live and in person. Linda Carter will show up, which that's not a hard get because she's on Supergirl as the president. As the president. Uh, so th- those three will be there live. The question will be, or live, right, or in the shows. But the question will be, how how are they going to connect the DC movie universe? My hope would be, they should reach out to Jason Momoa. Because he, of all of them, I think he would be the one that'd be like, "Yeah, man, I'll do it. Let's was, do it." I was just thinking the same thing, right? You just have him show up and be like, "Whoa, this is great!" But uh, I got my own thing to do, and then just boom, that's out. Well, we'll be happy, right? <laughs> then we'll be like, "Wait a minute, why did he stay and help?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Crisis uh, on Infinite Earths he, is available on that. He's got to go. He's gonna, he'll, he'll go. Hey guys, uh, I gotta go. I gotta go be with my wife Lisa from a different world. So I'll be. I'll be <laughs> 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 they'll, connect, they'll connect the Cosby world, the Cosby verse. Nah, it's, it's nah, the DC then universe. They'll have to beat up Bill Cosby as a villain. Um, no, but, this, is, um, this is before he was a villain. <laughs> before we knew he was a villain. Right, because he was a villain. This is like time. like Doctor Wells before we knew he was the Reverse Flash. <laughs> 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 we liked him. Oh my goodness! Yo, yeah. So, yo, I am here for that. Yes. And what I'm gonna do. You're gonna do what I do. I'm gonna do what you do. Which you always watch, make which you always make fun of me before. I'm not gonna watch any of them until they're of all the, out and then And then just binge them. Binge them. So you know what might have to happen? We're gonna have to watch them together. Might we might have to get together, get some keto pizza, and then just watch <laughs> <laughs> and just watch. That's five that'd be five, possibly six, seven hours. And then Mike will be like, You guys gotta leave. <laughs> Are you coming to my house? No one will kick us out. No, no. Um, it's got to be at the house because then the kids can watch. Ah, who cares about the kids? Um, Remember, we just had FaceTime. And what was Sonya saying? <laughs> what was Sonya saying? Ah, Supergirl. I couldn't understand. Ah, Supergirl. I couldn't, I couldn't understand her. Like we're in the Batcave. Her, oh, where's Batman? Polish. That's not Batman. That's, That's not Batman. Batman. And then she just jumped in front of the phone. Ah, Supergirl. Ah, Supergirl. <laughs> so, uh, oh, man, what am I looking at? Um. So yes. So um. Yeah. So so the crisis on infinite earth, man. Keep an eye out. Super dope. I'll be honest with you, man. Linda Carter's still looking pretty. So it'd be great to see her in that Wonder Woman uniform. Yo, shun, shun. Try to be respectful. Shun. Still looking good. Did I tell you that Linda still Carter? Still looking good, girl. That Linda Carter <laughs> on Twitter wished me a happy birthday one year. No. Oh here, go. oh, here we go. Humble brag. Hashtag, no, no, no. I, for a long, for a long time, I thought it was a fan page, and I just, like, ignored it. I was like, oh, right. Linda Carter. <laughs> yeah, like, whatever, right? And then uh, <laughs> Junior was the one that, like, clicked on it because she, like, you know, it's a tweet. So so she, he clicked on it, and he saw the little verified check mark. Right. And he, <laughs> he's, like, he's texting me all pissed and jealous because that's, like, his childhood crush. And I'm like, dude, that's not really her. Right. That's like a fan page. And then he sent me a snapshot. Yo, that's her. That's really her. She really sent you a happy birthday. Right? I was like, well, or her assi- uh, Here we go. I'm I'm a, like, I'm my gonna, year is made. I'm going to crap on your point. <laughs> or her assistant did. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap! On your point, her assistant said you. I don't you, care. It shows up with the verification. I would take it. Was <laughs> I was like, "That's it." Word. I was like, "Sorry, baby, but you can't top this as a birthday gift." <laughs> nice. <laughs> what do I get from Magda? An attempt to top it? No. I uh, attempt, whatever. You're ridiculous. Yeah, she was like, away. "Yeah." That's that's more that's more Magda speed. Yeah, you're ridiculous. For me, for Nicholas. me, like the the gift that kept on giving was being able to rub it in Junior's face. <laughs> wow, 
it That's wasn't hilarious. so much about yo what the woman wish happy birthday it was about yeah she wished me not you <laughs> she don't even know who you are <laughs> she wish you happy birthday though right uh, uh that was great so so Batwoman. Tell me more about Batwoman. I didn't hear about that. So no, apparently there was an article that came out. I, I just saw there's this uh YouTube channel called Nerd Rotic that I I'll watch some of his videos. Okay. And uh he was at Comic Con and obviously. And uh he was uh you know, he just posted a quick video and, and one of the things was that apparently so it was it was he showed the new trailer for that little teaser for Batwoman where everybody's getting the tattoos. Um so there's this teaser. You don't have to look it up because it's garbage. But it's like people <laughs> people are coming into this tattoo shop and they're like, "Oh, I want this. I want this. I want this." And it turns out that everybody's getting the the Batwoman symbol, you know, because the, the red bat. Because they're no, well, because they're shining it, you know, oh, okay. the bat signal. But it's the Batwoman's version of the of the okay, bat signal. Okay, okay, okay. And so people are getting it tattooed, and she, the girl, walks in and she's like, walks out like, ha, you know. And I mean, it, it's like they're really trying hard to push. And so, obviously, one of the biggest worries with this show is, you know, how is it going to be woke? Is it going to be super SJW um, kind of a thing? Apparently, like the, Supergirl, like Supergirl became, but th- th- this would be right off the uh, right off the rip, right? But then, apparently, somebody saw they they've already shown the trailer, and one of uh, these kind of more progressive sites reviewed it and they were kind of like, eh, it was okay, it had issues. But it's great because it's, it's promoting, you know, a lesbian character. Eh. But but it was one of those things where they were like, eh, it's like, like you got the feeling like it was like, eh, it's got problems, not really that good. But because they're promoting this thing that we believe in, then right. we got to give then it a shot. Watch it. We got to give it a shot. And so... The guy from Nerd Roddy, one of the things he posted was, he was like, yo, this chick can't act. He kept saying, this chick can't act. And he goes, I have a friend who works in the industry cutting trailers. And he says that, and I never thought about this. It makes so much sense. He said that when, when uh, they're worried about a show and they start cutting trailers, if the main character doesn't have any lines in their own trailer, or maybe like one or two lines, two lines. that means that, they're, that, means that the, the studio is worried about this trailer, they're they're like this this person can't act, and so they're trying to give not give them much time on the trailer so as to not drive people away from from the show from watching the show. Wow. So I mean that's I mean that makes sense to me when I you know when you when you say that you think about it, you think about all the trailers, and you think of the trailers that you're like yo, yo yeah that's right some trailers the main actor the main character doesn't ever speak. And then those shows don't tend to be don't tend to be that good. Wow. So I have to tell you, I'm really not that excited about Batwoman. I I, I was after Elseworlds, but after seeing the first trailer, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. Cautiously. After the first trailer, I was like, yeah, nah, this ain't for me. Because so, even when even I, I try to get into the comics. Right. And the Batwoman comics for me are corny, right? But when she works with the Bat family, um, in Detective Comics, with Batman, Robin, or whatever, right? Then there's a better dynamic, it's a better, better character, right? But her, like, I don't. I mean, for me, if that comic is canceled, right? Right. I don't think anybody would. But miss apparently, it. no. Apparently, that's it's that's one of their more popular. Dude, they they canceled it and they brought it back. Nice I don't. I don't know. Right, like it was canceled before, and then they brought oh, it back. Kind of like Captain Marvel, but anyway, <laughs> no, because it only happened once with Batwoman. Yeah, Captain Marvel's been <laughs> like nine times. Anyway, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stop talking about Captain Marvel. Okay, yo, uh, but, and we'll, and, we'll and we'll talk about Captain Marvel. And right? we'll, news came out that Avengers passed Avatar. Avatar as, as the highest grossing movie. Right, of course, you know, not, not hard to do when Avengers it's still you can still go watch in the movie theaters. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Um. Yeah. So we're not gonna get into the Marvel stuff. All we're gonna say no, is, just, just wanted to. I'll, I'm gonna put that out. There. I'm gonna say is that Marvel released their Phase Four. Uh, some of the stuff, yeah, you know that that we oh. knew was gonna come. Dude, you know what I didn't realize until just now. Sorry, because you said Phase Four and it reminded me that I thought What If was gonna be a movie. 
But what if it's, it's going to be an animated series? Oh, animated series. Yeah. Oh. It's going to be animated. Uh, I knew it was going to be a TV show. I didn't know it was going to be animated. Yeah, but it's going to be So what the, what it, okay, the so they announced what if is one of the sh- what are the yeah, new Disney all. You want to look it up just look Disney it up. Plus it's, shows. As DC so they just everywhere. Yeah, so they just dropped the Marvel Phase 4. So obviously you're going to have Doctor Strange 2, which they're saying it's going to be kind of like a horror, a PG-13 horror. Uh there's going to be uh <laughs> an oxymoron, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, obviously Black Panther 2, Captain Marvel right. 2, Eternals. But I heard this. Captain Marvel 2 was not going to be phase 4. I read before before I left work. I read that Captain Marvel 2 was going to be phase 5. Which is garbage a character it is and makes they sense. Just phase her out completely. <laughs> right, cuz I don't think anyone really liked her. Right, um, but apparently Spider-Man's going to stay with Marvel. Spider-Man right. Well, they ha- it has to, right? Then they sign like the three movie deal. No, but it's already done. Far from home was the last one. Oh, okay. It was so, a five movie deal that started with Civil War. Gotcha. So we got that. We have uh, the new Thor movie they announced, Thor, where Which they're going to bring girl Thor. Ridiculous. Anyway, the point is this: we have thoughts, and we're not going to discuss them because we'll get lost in the weeds, and then we'll be here till tomorrow. <sighs> if you want to read up on what happened with Marvel Phase Four, you go ahead and read. There's only a, for me. There's a couple of shows that intrigue me. Uh, Hawkeye. Um, I, honestly, the Winter Soldier and Falcon show should be pretty good, dude. All right, and that's enough, it. and that's it. So that's it. You say um, Winter Soldier and Falcon on Netflix. There's a movie called Point Black. Point Black. Point Blank. It's with the actor that played Falcon and the guy and that played Dead Bones that played or Dead Scrolls. Crossbones. It's cross, <laughs> dead Bones. Dead bones. <laughs> Crossbones. Dead bones. Dead bones will rise again. <laughs> I uh, saw it. That's Did you a, see it? Did you see the movie? I saw the movie. Okay. It was all right. It was a remake of a French movie that was much better. Get out of here. I thought it was cool. We watched it last night. I was like, okay, this is um, surprisingly okay. No, no, it was it was fun. It was a fine movie. It was a fun movie. But I'm saying that it's a remake of a French movie that I've seen. No, I said I didn't know it was, was a remake. Yeah. Don't ask me why. Remake, don't, don't ask me. As much, as much crap as I talk about the French, don't ask me why I'm oh, watching French a French sucked, movie. But, um, Unless it's Luc Besson. I like his movies. Uh, I don't know. District 13, The Transporter, okay, Fifth so, Element. He's yeah, a, isn't he the guy that the did director. Um, the, that last movie that we went to see at Cumberland? The Valerian. Valerian. Yeah, I thought Valerian sucked. I liked it. I thought uh, Valerian was garbage. Lucy, which I finally saw Lucy the other day. It was all right until the end was weird. The end, the end was preachy. The end, the end was just weird. The end was she real like dis- She like, like melts into the computer. Lucy was great, and then the end got real preachy about real, the universe being God. Real weird. Um, but you know, Luke Besson, he's got. I mean, he's got some good yeah, he's movies. He's got some great movies, and he's written like, come some. On. And he's written some good movies. The Fifth Element is forget about it. It's still classic. one of my favorites. Uh, to Paris with Love with John Travolta, which I know yeah, a lot of people didn't like. Was crap. I enjoyed it. That was because I was a garbage I, movie. I love those kind of movies anyway. That movie was garbage. So, um, but it's Luc Besson. So his, you know, you know. Here's the thing with Luc Besson. I know, regardless of whatever, I know I'm gonna get some pretty good action, and that's all I care about when I see Valerian one of his good movies. action. I had some some decent action, nah, but his his that was his his ver- was, was whack. Nah, man, that movie was not that movie was not that bad. You liked it when we first watched it. You were like, oh, it wasn't bad. It was visually was stunning visually was stunning but it you was know, a garbage this, it movie. was okay better than avatar i'll tell you that much oh, oh, you know I'll, i hated avatar i'll stake i'll stake my reputation on that not much of a reputation but i'll stake it on there um so anyway you know luc besson uh i don't you know, know why, i don't know how, how i i hated avatar i don't know why we got into that but anyway the point is that uh phase 4 marvel got some interesting stuff uh but you can go find that because I'm I'm Cause we don't care. I'm almost We're DC I am people. I am almost <laughs> over Marvel stuff with just some of their with DC some people. of their woke we don't stuff. care um, yo and back on DC people the trailer for the Harley Quinn show dropped yo it was dope if and you it got, was make sure ill you, but make sure you watch it as an adult with adults don't watch it with kids because it's a uh, it's a grown it's up cartoon adult, it's adult animation um so anyway with all that. Uh, and that that's not to mean that it's dirty. So we no, can't. no, no. So with all, so yeah, no. So with all that, um, yeah, that's where we're at. Um, thought I had one more thing, but you know what? It's not important. All right, so we're gonna jump into this. We're gonna go no ahead and skip. Importante. All right, so we had this thing, this article. We'll just go. To, we'll push it back to next week. Uh, the article was, um, and I'll have Jay post it so you, people can read it if you're interested in reading it. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna we'll talk about this article next week. 
um, a do on time. But the article was, should we use secular music in worship? And it was very, I thought it was very interesting. I sent it to Jay. He concurred. We nerded out Especially a little. Especially with the experiences. We nerded out a little too longer than I wanted to. Yeah, um, but we knew that was going to be a but, race. Uh, uh, but check it out if you can. Um, and I said, me and Jay will, there's three points in it. Me and Jay will go through those points next week. Yeah, we can talk about it next week. We, could, a, we could use it as a main talking point. Because it's week. a very, it's a very good point. Uh, very good question, especially with all the, the stuff we talk about with um, secularism kind of influencing the church instead of the other way around. Uh, Correct. So this week's trailer, which is going to lead right into to what Jay wanted to talk about this week. Which made me dusty. Uh, and I... I lost it. But that's okay. So they, today, uh, the trailer for uh, Mr. Rogers. Would you be my neighbor? Would uh, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood? The movie Would You Be My Neighbor, starring Tom Hanks. Uh, creepy. The the what? Creepy. How much he looked like Mr. Rogers? Oh, creepy in that they did a really good job. They did a great job, um, dude. I froze. Like right. I was like, I got shook. They brought him back. Like I thought, <laughs> no, I thought, I thought that they had like, um, I thought it was a documentary, like the documentary that came out. Right. So I thought that it was like footage. Gotcha. Right. Like I had to like, like the, the, yeah, do a double take. It's like, yo, Woody grew up. Um, what was it called again? Would, would you, be, you be my neighbor? Would you be my neighbor? Charlie for Mister. Uh, the story about um, Mister. Mister Rogers. Rogers. Oh, why am my brain flipping out? Would you be my neighbor? Trailer movie. Mister Rogers. Yo. And how are you? And it's just about him and his show and the impact. It really seems to be more about the impact about that the he had impact. on this writer right. than he. I, it, and the impact that he had on people. I mean, the impact on society, on culture. <laughs> right. But it's, but it's the lens of the impact that he had on this writer who he because seems to have developed this relationship with. Very I, cool. I loved Mr. Rogers growing up. I, didn't, I never watched it. My kids now, they, um, they watch Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, which is a spinoff. From Mr. Rogers. And dude, like looking back at episodes now, like Mr. Rogers was real controversial. Right. Right. To be uh, like a kid's show on PBS and whatever. Like right. it was like culturally, he right. was really controversial. Right. Not, he not did a lot of things right. that not, other shows were. Right. Not do. not um subject wise, but right, culture, because he was the first one that like he had an African American on his show and they like they they washed their feet. Yeah. Right, they put their feet in the pool. It's very symbolic because Mr. Rogers was, was a Presbyterian a minister. Yeah, and so uh, I saw a tweet from a rabbi that was like, "Yo, you know, he embodied that love your, your neighbor, neighbor, right? That uh, it's in Leviticus, and that Jesus gave as one of his commandments: love your neighbor as, as yourself. yourself. And that's what he taught, right? Loving yourself and loving your neighbors." Um, which and he taught that we were all neighbors. That we were all neighbors, right, and he and and humanity, his right in the closing of his sh- and his close all neighbors and the closing of his shows right was very like you're special and mm-hmm. you're unique and uh, and it was in a, it was before it became kind of saccharine, you know like uh, you need to have some high self esteem and everybody needs to do what you know. But he was right. like speaking to kids saying, look, because Mr. Rogers had a tough growing up. I mean, he he had a good family, but he was he was. Uh, I was reading up on him. He was extremely shy, kind of introverted. He didn't have a lot of friends. He got bullied um, mm-hmm. until he got to high school. Then he, some ki- he said some kids saw my worth and saw what I was on the inside, and that kind of helped him come out of that. So check it out. Check the trailer. Have some tissue to dab. Dab your eyes. Dab the dust off of your eyes. So Mr. Rogers impacted culture as a Christian without being... Super preachy. And what, without, right? you know, denying. Which leads us to, Jake? Right, which leads us to our conversation of, to, of the week. Um, I've been following this guy on social media for a while, um, mainly because Juice. Juice introduced me to him because when Juice was invited to go to Portland, with um, the Make a Wish Foundation for this kid that we met at Creation West, who um, he he I forget what sickness he has, but he was connected to like some boy band. He makes music, right? And um, we put him on stage, and apparently we brought him like on stage when Tadashi was performing. Right, a big Tadashi and NF fan, and that like made his life. 
right? So his parish remembered that, and they brought Juice out to host his Make a Wish, which was to perform live in front of an audience with that boy band that he grew up with. Well, one of the singers he grew up with them. But anyway, whatever, right? So the Make a Wish people bought Juice um, clothes to host, and they got him a pair of Fear of God jeans, which is like three hundred dollars. Right, right. Uh, so I never heard of it until Juice told me. It's like, ah, oh, no, you need to look him up. You need to look him up. So I looked him up, and I'm like, damn. Right, but then right, Jay had a crush on him. Was that why? And no, because it was expensive. Oh, oh, oh yeah, jeans. yeah. <laughs> Shoot, I look at I look at fifty dollar jeans, and I'm like. Hmm. Yeah, and here I am going to Walmart buying the twenty-two dollar Levi's, <laughs> and even then I'm like, oh, right. So, so my thing is, so then I research like why, why like fear of God, like you know, right. what it, God, right, right? Because is it like true religion? Where yeah, exactly, right? You know, is you're thinking, true oh, religion? true religion, feed the home, and it's no, that's not no, with that, no, 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 no not no, at all, no, <laughs> no. not nothing to do with widows or orphans, not at all, not at all, right? So, um, so no, so then I found out. That this guy's an actual Christian and he believes in God, like for real, for real. So then I started following him on social media just to see, right, right, just to see if he was really about what his, what like everything I've read, right, about him is, right. And um, I mean, I haven't seen anything that went against anything, but then, but then um, I saw, I don't remember where I read the article, but I read an article. And it's and it, and it showed up in the articles that you sent me too. Well, the one in Relevant magazine, but I read an article on that that spoke that he that he shared how he got the name Fear of God, which is, which was in a dark time. He was an alcoholic. He was throwing parties in L.A. and he was hanging out with celebrities and whatever. And he went home because he was raised a believer with his family. Right. And and one thing his family did, dude. And I thought then this is what this is what stood out for me of all of this, right? Which which says a lot. His family he said his family always does devotionals together. And so the devotional Dinner devotionals. So the devotional they did came out of Oswald Chambers, right? My, my most for his highest, which like that is old school. That's like old school. Like it's beyond me and Jay. That's beyond Jay old school. Because he's <laughs> right. older he's older than me. I'm older, like way older than right? me. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, like it's 20 super, years older than me. It's Just super old school. Way beyond old school. It's super old school. So that's what like caught me. It's like, yo, I, Oswald Chambers. I read that and I was he was like, oh, yeah, we were doing a, a devotional out of Oswald Chambers, my almost for his highest. Yo, like I, I stopped and I pulled away right there and I was like, whoa. Right? Because that's not, that's not a name that you throw around to be, for it to be taken lightly. Right? That's like Oswald Chambers, Smith Wigglesworth. Hey, these are names that hold a lot of weight. Right, but right, as far as their theology and 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 how, you know how 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 unashamed and unabashed they are about serving God, right? So when I read that, like I stopped, said copy, <laughs> email juice, paste. It's like, yo, you need to read this, right? Right, you need to read this because like, it's not just that this guy is doing it to be trendy because right now, you know, doing. Christian things is trendy. We talked about that in the Send in the Clowns episode. Right. Um, but, like, he's legit. He's legitimately, legitimately a lover of Christ, right? And he puts his money where his mouth is, right? And he, he walks the walk. So we're talking about Jerry Lorenzo. Right. So I want to I wanna, I wanna read this right here because uh, it says, uh, uh, so that's when his parents read it. He, as he was talking about, he went to visit his parents in the midst of all the partying and all this stuff. And when he was being a, when he was a party promoter, um, uh, that's when his parents. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, close, close. Uh, that's when his parents read a passage from Oswald Chambers' devotional classic, "My Almost for His Highest," that would change his life. The passage the passage described God on a throne, wreathed, wreathed in glory, but surrounded by dark clouds, dark and light. Right. I just had this vision of God, and kind of, and he kind of looked just like really cool for the first time. This wasn't a Sunday school God. This wasn't a corny Christian bookstore depiction. This was an all powerful God who demanded respect and should be feared by those who oppose him. In my mind, I was like, oh my God, this is a good foundation to build this clothing line on, the fear of God. When you're in relationship with him, you're at peace with him. 
But if you're not in relationship, you see you see those clouds in darkness as literal clouds of darkness. And there's like a literal fear. I was like, man, I've got I've got this foundation. I could build a brand on. Like who who thinks of building a brand on on even on even a topic that even in, that that is that is found to be controversial even in churches today? Right. right? Because a lot of people will say, oh no, well, fear of God isn't like a literal fear of God. And like you you ask. You ask Francis Chan, and he'll tell you, "Yeah, yeah, it is, right?" Because right? you, you, you know, yeah, I this, think it's this, a combination. This God with this awesome power, right? This, this, this so mighty, right. that so could, grand, that snuff so you. great, right? Like, yes, there is a reverence and there is a fear, and I always thought of it that way because you met my dad, right? right. I re- there was I have a reverence for right. My you dad. have a respect. A respect, right, a respect and reverence for your dad, but, but you had I a real fear. I also had a literal fear. A literal of my fear, dad. right? I mean, like, that's not right. like not like because oh, I'm scared of my dad because he's so abusive. I'm scared of my dad because he's my dad, and yes, he, he cracks the hammer when it needs to be. Right, right. But then sometimes a literal. Hammer. But then he'll turn around and you know and and give you, know, you tacos. And, and not tacos. They were Puerto Rican. Right. You know, he'll go and say, but tacos <laughs> works. Tacos works. That's the tacos, example. Tacos, no one has to know, Jay. Tacos, no one has to know, Jay. Tacos always works. You're the one that made a comment about the mm, <laughs> tortilla. <love> tacos. <laughs> right? But yeah. So, and he went, and he, not only did that change his life. Right. Right? Like, it, it literally changed his life. That vision that he had of a cool God and not this corny Christian bookstore God or whatever, Sunday school God, as he said. Not only did it change his life, like, brought him back to full repentance, but also he built a very successful brand, right. and he built the brand very, on it. He didn't very expensive brand. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm. But I'm saying though, right. like he didn't. All right, so right. Proverbs nine ten, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. Right, knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Right. Proverbs, the beginning of wisdom is fear of God. Is the fear of God. So, like he. That was his beginning of wisdom. Right. Right. But the thing is that he could have went and he could have called his brand Dark Clouds. Right. Right. Let's just say, because that's the that's that's the vision that God gave him. That's what he saw. He could have called it Dark Clouds. Right. Right. And it probably still would have been successful. But no. Right. He's like, I can build a brand on this because this is what marked me. This is what changed my life. And I'm going to call it Fear of God. Right. Right. And right now, it is one of the most successful brands out there in fashion and footwear. And streetwear, yeah. Right? And it's, and it's crazy because we live in a time, and this is why I wanted to talk about this, because we live in a time where a lot of people that we know personally or that I know personally or that we hear about or we listen to, where they feel that in order for them to be successful in the eyes of common culture, when I say common culture, I mean Outside culture, outside church culture, not kingdom, right? But you know, in in regular world culture, they feel that in order to be successful and to be taken seriously in that side of things, they have to almost like hide the name of God. They right. have to hide the fact that they're Christians, right? They have to hide the fact that they're believers and just want to be seen as quote unquote normal. Right, I want to build relationships and let them know that I'm just normal. I right. go through all these things too, and then this guy, right, was like, "Nah, I'm not doing that. I'm going to call my brand Fear of God, all right? Because right? there's freedom in the name of Jesus. There's freedom in what God does, and I'm going to call it Fear of God, and I'm going to build my brand. Like it's almost like I'm going to build my brand on this rock, and then and, and that's it. Right. And what what I found, see, I mean, I'm I, when you when you when you told me to look into him I, you know i went in there with my eyes of <laughs> skepticism because you know do you know I, re- I read what he wrote on the instagram that you linked me to right and i was and i was kind of like uh, i don't know so i started digging and the thing that stood out for me the two things that stood out for me number one is if you have a family uh, y'all need to be doing prayer and devotions together every night. <laughs> That's funny because Mike right? and I just talked about this this weekend um, about doing that because uh, you know uh, Bible right the Bible tells right Bible talks about how we should pray you know pray for your children right so that they do not depart right now they might go off on a journey and 
but they'll the, but if we but, st- the, but, but scripture says that they'll return but, but they'll return and and and, and, and and I'm a living testimony to that and the fact that and the fact that you know his story is yeah we grew up with my mom playing praise music and we did prayer and devotions every night around the dinner table Sunday nights he said Sunday right nights. and that's a uh, was it Sunday I thought he said every night yeah, um I think I read Sunday nights uh all right well you know I got the uh uh, it was partying. Uh, uh, design reading at this point. Um, I don't. I I thought it was every night. Maybe it was Sunday nights, but I I I understood it is every night. And let's be real. And that's okay. It doesn't hurt. It, it doesn't hurt if it's every night. Um, so so one thing was like wow, like his parents were faithful. So you know to to speak Jesus, right? To speak God into their kids' lives. And so when he was at his darkest and he came home, you know, his parents just did what they did. Right. And he even said it in the interview. He said it. Like, I knew that going home meant going back to doing those things and facing those things. Right. Right. So, you know, it's it's amazing. That I'm gonna I'm gonna like I I I wrote down all these quotes, right? That like he says, he says he says, in my mind, I was like, oh, oh, my God, this is a good foundation to build this clothing line on, the fear of God. He says, when you're in relationship with him, you're at peace with him. But if you're not, you see those clouds and darkness as literal clouds and darkness. Oh, no, wait, you read that already. Here it is. Something about this idea of the fear of God, a God who could burst through the darkness like Chambers described, spark something. I'm not talking about a real fear, he explains. I'm talking about a respect, a reverence. But if you don't know that, that's kind of gangster, right? Right. And this is this is <laughs> these these next two is talks to the to, to the issues that I'm talking about, right? He says, Are you finding your freedom and having a bunch of money in the bank? Is that your definition of freedom? Because I'm fine, I'm defining freedom as being obedient. Right? Nobody thinks about freedom. Nobody puts freedom and obedience in the same line. Right. Right? And he says, I don't think, and this is the one. I say this not in this not in these words, right? But I say something similar. It says I don't think God needs anything to influence or change culture. Lorenzo says God doesn't necessarily need a person or a platform. He just needs someone who's obedient. So you know, he's he's real big <clears throat> on the fact that God tells you to do something, right? Be obedient to the call, right? Right. Don't worry about the rest, right? And you know what's funny is that. So, so he had, I'm not even going to say, I mean, I'm not even going to say that, that he was called to do this, to, to, do, a, to, do, a to line. do a clothing line, right? I, for me, that's a stretch. But I will say this. He had a desire. He had a, he had a desire to do something. He had a, right? He, 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 he found this passion for, I want to develop the streetwear. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to pursue it. I'm going to pursue developing my streetwear and making it the best possible. That's, I mean, I'm talking about, this is my interpretation, right? And in that, right, in him making the best that he could do as he grew in the business, as he learned, because he even talks about, you know, getting ripped off, losing money yeah. uh, in different articles. In that, all of a sudden, because he... And this is where being faithful, right? Being faithful to to what God has given you and pursuing that and pursuing that in faithfulness. Yeah. Through that, right? Kanye, Kanye reaches out to him and he ends up working with Kanye for three years. Right. Right. Uh, Bieber reaches out to him. And he does and he all does, of his tour merch for the purpose tour. He does a, not which only, was his biggest not, and his last tour. And then not only tour merch, but exclusive tour merch. Right. And he does work with Jay Z, you know, well. and he did it with Jay Z and, and and some other artists, uh, and then and then because he he did that and it was excellent and it made money, right? Because that's this the business. Then Nike comes knocking, hey, let's do the shoe, uh, and so that happens, right? And, and then he ends up selling, from what I read, some of the most expensive shoes that have ever co- been yeah. been dropped as exclusives. Um, that, that Nike couldn't had even fulfill. A hard time fulfilling. They didn't have enough uh, children in the sweatshops to to make them. <laughs> you stupid. Um, uh, ethical sweatshops. Anyway, um, so living wage sweatshops. So, so what? So what? I, so 
So what I see in this story, right? What I see in 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 this guy's story is number one, he's not ashamed of speaking where he came from, and and speaking about how God he's unapologetic, right? Christian, how God is in in that. In that forum, in that right. medium. So how God is integral to his story, right? God is integral to his story in every article I read. I read three different articles, maybe four different articles. And in all of them, God was from in the article. Perspectives, right, right, from different organizations. From different news medias that were not, not Christian. That were not Christian. Uh, none of them were Christian, actually, except for relevance. Except for relevant. Right? Mm-hmm. And they're all God, God was all up in all of those articles. Um, so we see. We see that A, um, he he felt a calling or he, or he felt God touch him and he felt God spoke to him and he acted on it. Right. Right. Because he came in thinking, I want to do this line. And he feels God and he goes, you know what? I'm going to name, I'm going to name this thing. I'm going to pursue after God. Is give this God an, honor. Give God honor. Right. In that. Give him the glory. Number two, he didn't seek to be, he started to make a street line. He didn't know what he was doing, but he didn't do it to try to be famous. Right. Right. And that's one of the things we always talk about. Right. What was warned against, you know, he, he wasn't like, oh, I'm going to do this to make God famous. Right. He was like, I'm going to honor God in this. It's just a big difference. It says here on his own, he started his fear of God clothing line as a way to be creative and be honorable to the creator. Right. So he didn't start it. He didn't start it as a way to seek fame or to or to go, oh, you know what? I'm going to make God famous by doing this. Yeah. Um, and I think God, you know, and it just looks like God honored that, right? God honors where, honors him because he, he places God, from what we've read, right? From what we know, because all we know is what we've read. Correct. That he places God at the center of what it is. At who the we, forefront. At, at the center of for, right? at, at what he is and who he is. Right. Um, like he doesn't compromise his faith. He doesn't compromise his mission. Which he is doesn't compromise already, the religion, right? He doesn't. He doesn't compromise anything, right? right. He's, again, he's unapologetic about who, who he is, is and, and who his he faith is in Christ. Now, that's funny, no, because, right? So all these people, all these Christians, right? Oh, he's a Christian, so they're giving him shine. Guess what? I, I, I thought about this as we're talking about this. Chick Fil A. I think it's like the second most successful. Uh, I think it was like the second grossing or third grossing. Uh, fast food restaurant in America. Yeah. Right? Only behind like McDonald's and like Burger King or something. Uh um founded on what? On on uh by a Christian man who said we're going to follow these principles. And one of those is what? We're closed on Sunday so people could be with their families and go to the wor- the, go to their houses of worship. Super successful company. Correct. Hobby Lobby run by Christians. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. Hobby Lobby run by Christians trying to run their bit. Matter of fact, they got in trouble because they wouldn't, they didn't want to cover abortive uh, me, uh, medicines that you could take that would cause you to abort, right? Um, uh, abort the baby or the fetus or the egg or whatever. They didn't want to cover that. They got in a lot of trouble, went to court, blah, 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 blah. But they stood their ground, right? Hobby Lobby's, you know, it, I mean, if you're going to go do crafts, where do you go? Hobby Lobby or Michael's? If you do crafts, yeah. Right? Like, those are the two biggest places. Hobby Lobby, run by believers. One of the, one of the, most, one of, one of the most favorite fast food restaurants out west. In-N-Out Burger. In-N-Out Burger? Christians. In, in, on, their, on their wrappers and their cups and stuff, you can find little Bible verses. Um, and Adam Carolla, he's like, I'm an atheist. He goes, I don't care that they're Christian. As long as they make a good burger. <laughs> 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 Their burger is delicious. Uh, who else? So, Cookout and Forever 21. Okay. I didn't know about those. Yeah. So, Cookout also has Bible verses on, like that stuff. So, so here's so here's the thing, right? Uh, you know, these were companies that were founded by people that were like, you know, we're people of faith, and faith is going to permeate what we do and how we conduct our business. And what? They're successful. I mean, those are huge examples of success, right? But I think it's, I mean, obviously there's been Christians that have started businesses that have failed. I mean, that's that's yeah. just, just the reality of, like of, me. of I everything. I tried to start something that was stolen from me right? by another Christian. 
so a Christian succeeded and failed. Amazing. <laughs> but what's it? But what's it? But what's the what's the point? The point is that in all that we do, as we as we begin as we begin whatever it is that we're going to do, whether it's, it's our studies, whether it's a business, whatever endeavor, right. it, sh- it should be God first, and we should not, and we should not. Um, we should not be ashamed, and we should and we should not think twice about saying, "Yo, I do this for the Lord. I do this for God." And then just let the let the chips fall where they and may, let it ride. and let God bless you how He's going to bless you, or let Him guide you in whatever other direction. Maybe He doesn't want you to do this; He wants you to do something else. But He needs to know that you're willing to take those steps. Right. Um, this weekend, pa- pa- Pastor Ashley, if you want to, was talking. He was talking about you know God's. God works backwards. He's like, he's got this great, he's got the future he wants for you, but you, you got to be willing to walk in that. So, he, you know, so you have to go through the trials. You have to go through the things, but it's about staying faithful in business, in music, uh, in relationships, in everything. Is God, is God going to be the center of, of your life brand, right? And not just your, your business brand, your economic brand. You know, I, I, to me, that, those are the lessons that I see from this. Those, those, those are definitely the takeaways, right? And, and it's like, you know, <clears throat> when he says that God doesn't need help to build a platform, I've always said it to these knuckleheads that always say that they need to do whatever, whatever, whatever non-God or God-rejecting thing to reach people, right? I've always told them, dude, that's backwards. God doesn't need your help, right. right, to reach or do anything. Like you are not there at creation giving God pointers. God doesn't need your help. He doesn't need you to fix things first before he shows up, right? Right. That's that's not that's not how God works. Right? That's not what he needs you for, right? And um and it's it's always like backwards. That's just backwards thinking like like we need to be like, "All right, God, hold on." Hold on, let right. me let me got let this. me set the scene for you first, right? I got it, right? <clears throat> and if, if all we do, right, come in recognizing God for who He is, right, giving Him complete control, keeping Him central to everything, right? I, I <laughs> I've been I've been asking myself lately, right, wh- when did I stop? You know, and I've been, and I've been asking God, you know, Lord, when when did I stop coming to you first? Right. With my ideas and with my desires and with my dreams. Right. Rather than, oh, no. Like people, oh, yeah, well, you got to pray, but you got to do things too. Like, nah, nah, nah. Right. The Israelites prayed. The Israelites saw everywhere in the Bible you see that even Jesus separated himself and he sought God first. Right. Right. He sought God first. People separate you, you seek God first. And then let God lead and let God guide. Right. Right. But, and I've always asked him, and like I'm asking, well, I'm asking him now, like, when did I stop? Right, coming to you first, right, and asking for your help, asking for your direction, asking you first. What do you think of this idea that I have, right? Rather than saying, "Oh, it's a great idea," yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can honor God with this, and boom, right, and right. then God is like, um, "Yo, <laughs> can I tell you how I feel about it?" Right, right, you know, and um, and there's there's life in that, right? There's life in that, and there's success in that, right, right. There's, there's I mean, <laughs> there's freedom. There's in that. freedom. Are you even are you even going? Hey, God, you know this is the idea that I have. Um, I'm I'm beginning the pro- I'm going to begin the process. But I need you, I, I want you to speak to me as we go through this process, so you can let me know. Take a left, take a right, because he did. He's I mean he's he's done that right. Yeah. I mean, uh, scripture talks was it Peter? I think Peter was like, hey, I'm going to go here, and and so he began going there, and God stopped him, and and then he ended up going where God wanted him to go. Right. You know, so so it wasn't because right, it was just Peter had a desire to, to to or not Peter, I think it was Paul. Paul had a desire to to just to preach God's word, and he's like, I know those people need it, so I'm gonna go there. But he's but he stayed what he stayed listening. He stayed listening, and I think that's the thing. I think that what you're saying right is is we need to listen, and it's okay. I think it's so. I think it's okay to to begin those steps, but you need to listen so that you can go oh. No, this is not what God wants me to do. Right. Because you you can't you can't sit there and not do anything 
And I don't think that I don't think that's necessarily what God wants us to do is just to kind of sit and be like, well, sorry, I haven't heard nothing. <laughs> it's we have to be in movement, but we have to be in movement and listen. Right. And 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 to close, to use right, to use the example of of Jerry Lorenzo, right? Is to the secret is in not compromising God, not compromising our faith, right? And the secret is in always honoring God, right? Because as I said, Proverbs nine ten says that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. Right? All reverence, all honor, all glory go to God and God alone. Not your agenda. That's it. And whatever God puts in your heart, if that's what he wants you to be successful in, you have untold success. Yeah. All right? Yeah, that's right. So that's it. Hey, Glav, thank you for joining us. Uh, hope Sorry if you, we got a little too DC nerdy for you. Sorry, not sorry. Not sorry, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> um, but hey, uh, listen, let us know what y'all think. Uh, Lorenzo, if you listen to this, what up, dog? Uh, I'm a size uh, 38 30s. <laughs> size 38 30, double XL. Um, hey, guys, love you. And we will uh, talk to you next week, as always, on Joaquin. I'm still Jay. Peace. Thanks for listening. Remember to go to the overflowpodcast.com to subscribe to the podcast on all streaming platforms and catch up on all the links of the week. And don't forget to follow our playlist on Spotify.